So my name is Inger Schwarzkopf. I am also a recruitment officer for the University of Toronto, but specifically for the Faculty of Applied Science and Engineering. I'm going to do a quick overview and go into a little bit of a detail about the faculty. And at the end, um, I'll leave some questions for you and I'll invite my colleague ma'am back up. And then we can um, answer questions regarding music and engineering. So for those of you, I'm going to start the presentation off with some quick facts. The University of Toronto was founded in 1827, uh, uh, so we have over 189 years of innovations under our belt. This continuously contributes to why our university and our engineering program continuously is ranked the number one nor uh, university in North America for startup companies. Last year we injected nearly $15 billion into the um, Canadian economy and amongst these very young bright students that are coming to U of T Engineering, about 40% of the first year incoming class are female. Um, and along with these students, there are also 86, um, amongst these students, I mean, 86 countries are represented. Um, amongst these students, they're also very successful, and a large portion of the successes of our students has to do with our uh, dedicated first-year office. Our first-year office is there to support our students anywhere from academics to social support to um, math aid, peer tutoring, and all those services. Um, we do have a 96% success rate from year one to year two. Um, so many of those successes continually um, contribute to our rankings of being the number one engineering school in Canada. But amongst this community of engineering, we're also part of a bigger community, that's the University of Toronto. Um, the Faculty of Engineering it has nearly uh, 5,000 undergraduate students. Um, and your first year incoming class is about a hundred students. So that's your home base, that's your community. But outside of that, you also belong to all of this. The 800 plus clubs that we have on campus, um, the different residences, the 44 libraries that we have on campus. Of course, there are specific engineering clubs as well. Uh, so it really depends on what you want to get involved in and how involved you want to be. If you want to just be within the faculty, there is a close-knit community, but you still have access to the whole university. Also what the university's engineering program has to offer for you is really important. So I'm going to go over the programs, the minors, the study abroad, and the internship opportunities that we offer for you. We have nine programs that you can study, um, pick from, but there are three entry points when you are applying. So there's the core eight, the general first year, and engineering science. How many of you in here know the type of engineering you want to study? A few people? All right. For those of you that said, and you put up your hand, that you know the type of engineering that you want to study, then you would probably know that you want to apply to one of these core eight programs, whether it be mechanical engineering, industrial, civil, um, computer, and so forth. So you are able to enter specifically into one of these programs in your first year. Even within these programs though, after first year, it's a little bit general within these programs. But in your upper years, you have areas of concentration. So say, for example, that you wanted to get into biomedical engineering. Well, biomedical engineering you'd find under the chemical engineering program. For your first two years, it's a general uh, chemical engineering program. And then your specialization within third and fourth year would be the biomedical. Um, another very popular one that I get asked is, I want to do software engineering. Well, at the University of Toronto, we have computer and electrical engineering. The two programs start off together, so you're exposed to both computer and electrical for the first two years, and then you would pick for your third year, which route do you want to go? Do you want software, hardware, do you want telecommunications? That's where you'll decide where your focus is. If you start browsing through the view book, starting at page 10, this will be outlined for every single program, so you don't have to feel like you're not going to see this again. Then, for those of you that didn't put up your hand, I'm assuming you weren't sure which one of these engineering programs you want to study. So we do have a general first year. 
The general first year allows you to explore your options in the first year. We also do bring in guest speakers from industry, from professors to upper year students to help you make that decision for second year. For second year, so this is a PDF, it should have opened up and branched uh, up for you guys, but um, after first year, you pick one of the core eight programs. So we'll go back. So you'd pick one of these eight programs as your area of focus starting for second year. So if you choose to do the general first year, it does not delay your study time. You still graduate in four years and you're still able to get your Bachelor's of Applied Science. This is just a year for you to explore your option and after first year, again, you enter into one of the core programs. And then lastly, we do have the Engineering Science program. Has anyone ever heard of Engineering Science? Anyone interested in applying to Engineering Science? Nobody, okay, perfect. In your view book that you have on page 22 and 23 are the details that outline Engineering Science. Engineering Science is a very enriched engineering curriculum. It's probably our most rigorous as well. It's gonna challenge you in the depth and the breadth and your first two years is purely math, physics, and sciences. So lots of fun. You, and I always tell students, you have to love math and physics. You can't just like it for this program. Because for the first two years, on page 22, you'll see those are all the courses you'll be taking. You don't get any electives or options for your first two years. However, for your last two years, you would pick from one of the specializations within that program. Very popular ones, of course, aerospace, biomedical, we also have robotics, and all the other ones listed in, down there. Um, however, if you are thinking of doing biomedical, your only route isn't just through engineering science. As I had mentioned previously, you have the option to do and, uh, biomedical through chemical engineering and focusing on biomedical or the other option is engineering science. But remember, the first two years is a general foundation, and then your last two years, you would focus on that biomedical. Um, regardless of which route you take, regardless of which route you take, you will still gra graduate with a Bachelor's of Applied Science in Engineering. Whether you apply in with a general first year, one of the core programs, or engineering science. Your degree will say Bachelor's of Applied Science in Engineering. For Engineering Science, there will be a distinction that says in Engineering Science. Um, we also do offer minors with all of our degrees for the core programs and the general first year, which would be under the core program. Um, all of our minors are completed in your four-year degree. So the way it works is in your degree you get elective courses and for those elective courses they're kind of courses that you take out of pure interest and then some students really want to have another area of focus. So perhaps some of our students want to have a business minor or maybe a bioengineering or nanoengineering, then you are able to do that. The purpose of this is to help you um, tailor your degree to your path and your career path and what you want to get out of your degree. Um, so back to this, um, again, what you want to get out of your degree, it really doesn't matter what you go into in the first year, you really can't make a wrong decision. And this is because even in first year, if you take a course and you say, oh, I decided to go into civil engineering but I'm leaning more towards mechanical, it's okay. You could still switch in the first year into second year. Those are the times to be making those decisions. I do get students asking, what if in third year I decide I want to switch programs? Well, at that point it might be a little bit more difficult, but within the first two years, there is a lot of room to move around within the programs. And also within when you're starting to think about career paths. Many of the engineering programs are, are applicable in many different industries. So if, they, if we look at healthcare, for example, you might see, you know, um, an industrial engineer, they're going to be looking at more the human factors and the infrastructures of a hospital, right? So they're going to be the ones that say, how can we make the surgery room or emergency room more efficient and effective for both the patient but also the surgeon and the employees? Um, then you might have an electrical and computer engineer that are actually creating equipment um, that are going to help detect diseases better. 
Then we also might have um, mechanical engineers that are actually creating new uh, technologies. So one of our professors at the faculty created the mechanical heart. Um, and we all are also in the making of creating the mechanical lung. So there are different ways, different healthcare, whether it's healthcare or if it's you know, sustainability um, or business or technology, many of the programs will apply to each industry. Then in your first year, you will also be exposed to design curriculum. So this is something very unique that our program offers. Um, and this doesn't mean design in the sense of drawing, but rather you're gonna be asked to devise a solution to a real world problem. So this course takes place in your second semester of first year. This group of students here created a helmet for someone that was a deaf cyclist. They put a, um, they put a camera in the front of the helmet to help the deaf cyclist maneuver around a busy city uh, like downtown Toronto. And then as you go throughout your years, um, the program does incorporate other design-focused courses. And then in fourth year, you also have the option to do a capstone project. A capstone project is going to be a little bit more sophisticated and challenging. Rather than it just being a semester, it is going to be a full year. You are placed with uh, about three to five students and then yourself. And again, instead of being given a problem and having to devise a solution, you're going to have to go out in the industry, find a problem, and then create a solution for that as well. Um, so this group of students over here actually created an escoskeletal leg for someone with cerebral palsy. So again, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but by the time you get to fourth year, you will have the skill sets to be able to do that. Um, so at the University of Toronto's engineering program, a large portion of our focus is, yes, on engineering design, but we also foster leadership and entrepreneurship opportunities. Um, we have something called ILEAD, which stands for the Institute for Leadership Education and Engineering. They offer certificates, courses, workshops for you to be able to work on your soft skills to become a great leader, to become a good team member, to be that next person that's going to lead within a company. Um, and within your team. And then we also have entrepreneurship opportunities. We have something called the hatchery. The hatchery functions similar to the TV show Dragon's Den. You pitch an idea to the group of investors. If they like your idea, you win money to further develop your ideas. So the idea of this is it's a summer program that you enter into from May to August. Say if you and a group of friends have an idea and you want to invent something. If you are taken into the program, you will be placed with a professor as a mentor and some money to help you uh, create your idea. And then at the end of summer, you would compete up against the other students in the program. The winning team will get money to uh, further develop that idea. So a few years ago, this jacket is an example of um, two students that actually went in and they created uh, fuel wear, which is a light jacket that would allow them to stay warm while being outside and um, during uh, extreme winter sports. And they actually won $15,000. And they actually took that money, of course, and developed the code even further. And now they have a startup company and employ about five people. So we have these opportunities. If there's something that you're thinking that you know, you want to go the non-traditional route and be an entrepreneur and create your own company, you have an idea, we will help you foster that. Um, we also do have a new building that is being built. It will be opening in uh, 2017. We don't know quite when yet, but it is the year of 2017. Um, it's going to be the Center for um, Engineering Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And it's going to look a little bit like this. So the idea of it is to really foster those three concepts, leadership, entrepreneurship, and engineering design. So the workspace, if you look at the right top hand corner, is going to be more collaborative. It's going to help our students, our faculty and staff be able to be in a more teamwork setting and more collaborative. Um, this is where everything is going to be housed from the hatchery to ILEAD um, to really be able to give more opportunities to our students. But then we also have um, our internship opportunities. 
So we, in addition to those three um, things that we really foster, we also find that internships and getting work experience is very, very important. So our internship program is a little bit different than your traditional uh, pro internship programs. On page 13 of your view book, you will see the outline of what it would look like if you choose to do an internship. It will extend your study time, so you would study for your first three years, then take a break, do your PY option, and then come back and complete your fourth year. So yes, it would take five years to graduate. It is um, a paid 12 to 16 month opportunity. Um, last year we had about 1,800 job opportunities for 700 students. Students expressed interest to our engineering career center at the beginning of third year. Um, and then when you're accepted into the program, um, you will actually work with a counselor to really work on your interviewing skills, build your resume, and then be given access to the portal. Um, our students get paid on average $50,000 uh, per year. And then last year we had a handful of students making as much as $104,000 um, a year. So a handful of those students were making that. And the benefit of this program is that you're not the only one investing in the company. As much as you invest in them, the company is investing in you. You're there for a longer time, right? 12 to 16 months is long term. So um, they will probably invest some professional development in, into your time there. They will probably make you more accountable for things. So about 70% of the students that come back actually get a job hand in offer even before they graduate fourth year. So I have a handful of students that I know right now that came back to fourth year um, and they are just waiting to graduate in April so they can go back to their job. Um, one student came back from Apple and working in Silicon Valley, California and he's going back and actually is taking a full job with Apple. Um, actually the tablet that we're passing around um, he actually created the software that we're using in that tablet. Um, so that actually was a side project he did in second year and that's to really go on to my next topic of we also have summer internship opportunities. So even before this long term opportunity the student actually took the chance and did a summer internship um, before doing a long term internship. So you have that flexibility, you're not tied into just one experience. You could do something after second year in, during your summer. We also have summer research opportunities, study abroad opportunities with other engineering universities where you go there, take their courses and their engineering credits do come back to your degree here at the University of Toronto. Um, and then here are just some examples of the opportunities and where our currently our students are working. Some of our students are actually working all over the world. We have some students working for Tesla, for Google, Apple, uh, some students working for BMW in Munich, Germany, um, some students currently working for manufacturing companies in Japan, Labatt, uh, CIBC and many of the other big five banks as well. So as I go back to this, I just briefly touched on these uh, five topics. I touched upon the program options that you have, some of the minors and certificates, um, that you have study abroad opportunities, and then the internship opportunity. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to finish up on this. So from here I'm going to switch over and talk a little bit about our missions. Um, but feel free to, you know, ask about any of these things if you want clarity after or browse through the view book. Everything that I've mentioned is in the view book. Um, so right now we'll talk a little bit about our application process. How many of you are currently in grade 12 and going to be applying shortly? Okay, a handful of you. So you'll definitely have to really listen. Um, so we're going to be looking at your grades earned in specific prerequisite courses, your overall academic history, and then the online student profile. So we are requiring that you apply on the Ontario University Application Centre by latest January 13th of 2017. Um, and then you must complete the online student profile by February 1st for equal consideration. That means having all your documents in. If you are having to write IELTS or TOEFL, we do need those scores in by February 1st as well for equal consideration. 
And then we do give her admissions offers anywhere from the months of February all the way to May. These are the courses that we are looking at. English, Physics, Chemistry, Advanced Functions, and Calculus. One additional MRU course is required. However, your average is only calculated on the five prerequisite courses. And noted down below, admissions averages are based on your first attempt. So we do not take repeated courses. These are the averages that we are looking for this year. For engineering science, to be considered minimum 90%. To make yourself competitive, you'd want to be low 90s to mid 90s. For general first year, chemical, electrical, and computer engineering, we're looking at high 80s to be considered. And all the other core programs, mid 80s to be considered. But realistically, to be competitive, you'd want to be above the high 80s and above. And again, these averages are just on the five prerequisite courses that I had mentioned here before. Now, I'll talk a little bit about what else goes into your application process. In addition to your academics, we will also be um, looking at a few other things. There's the engineering applicant portal. So after you apply on the OUAC website, we will acknowledge you in about seven to 10 days. After that happens, you'll be um, redirected to a third party page and you'll have to complete the online student profile. Um, one of the components will ask you to rank your top four engineering programs you want to be considered for. So if you are thinking about a few programs, this is, you don't do this on the Ontario University Application Center. You will do this on the applicant portal for engineering. So when we acknowledge you and we ask you about it. So if you're interested perhaps in engineering science as your first choice, then mechanical engineering, then electrical, and then maybe civil, then you rank those. And then if you get an offer for um, engineering science, we will extend you that offer. If you're refused, then we would give you off to your second choice and so forth. Another big portion is educational timeline and academic profile is just outlining where you've studied for the last four years, uh, what schools you went to, any, um, any specific courses you've taken, um, maybe an SAT, AP courses, IB, or anything outside of your regular curriculum. Um, then we're going to also be looking at extracurricular involvement. So this could be anything outside of your academics. Um, it could be volunteer hours, it could be sports, it could be a club, it could be an instrument, a part-time job, anything outside of your regular academics. And we do look at extracurriculars um, very much closely with academics. And then we also have something called the personal profile. And I'm sure many of you have heard about this. It is a time session and it has three questions and it takes 30 minutes to complete. Um, in the 30 minutes, two of the questions will be a video component and you'll have a few minutes to think about your response and then you'll record yourself into the webcam. We're not live, you're just live recording. Um, some examples could be very much interview based questions. So tell us why you think you're a good fit for this engineering program. Tell us about a time when you worked with someone that was challenging. How did you overcome that? Those would be the type of questions you see in the video. Then the last question is a written response and you'll have about 15 to 20 minutes to complete that and it'll be typed. Um, we're looking for about a page and that one will be more problem solving. So again, um, coming up with a solution to a problem, no right or wrong, we just wanna see how you come about your answers. Um, and again, all of this needs to be completed by the February 1st deadline date. And then, um, just one other thing on here, you will be monitoring the status of your application on the engineering applicant portal. Everything that I just said here is listed on page 26 of your view book. There's steps one through four, and that will outline everything that you need to complete. And then for finances, for scholarships, you will be automatically considered for admission scholarships. Um, we also do have department-based scholarships that you will be considered for. You can apply once you've been given an offer. 
Then we also have something called UTAS, which is the University of Toronto Advanced Planning Program. So if you've exhausted all financial means within, uh, whether it's a provincial loan or a bank loan, um, if you qualify for this program, it's a top-up loan that you never pay back, so it's a form of a bursary um, or a grant from the university. Then for residents, uh, residence is guaranteed for all first-year university students. So it doesn't matter how far or how close you live, as long as you apply by the March 31st deadline date. Again, this is outlined on your, in your view book on page 26, and you would apply on my Re the MyRes website. There are many different styles of residences. The most common one for engineering is uh, Chestnut, New College, and Innis. Again, you're not limited. You can apply to all the colleges and all the, res uh, the residences, pardon. Um, but those ones tend to house the most engineering students. At this point, I'm going to just put up our contact information um, and I will open up the floor to questions at this time. Thank you.